This video is a follow-up to some of my earlier videos on how to start up some backpacking type stoves with kerosene using some experimental techniques. As with most ideas, there is a point where you find that there may be a better way to do what you had been doing previously. And I'm hoping that this video shows some of that uh, evolutionary um, process. The most recent series that I have demonstrates a way of filling the fuel line, but it is somewhat involved, requiring some use of uh, calibration. And the technique that I'm going to be uh, demonstrating here does not require that. And it also has some other advantages. One of the most important things about any of these techniques is the necessity for making sure that the generator is adequately heated up or else you end up with a uh, what I call a fireball. These are some examples showing that effect where I have used a lesser amount of startup fuel to get the generator uh, warmed up and as a result uh, there is a, a certain amount of time that is required in order to actually heat up the generator adequately. If you fail to achieve this degree of um, preheating, then this is the effect that you will have, which is not desirable. The video that I'm going to be showing here is a means of ensuring that, as much as possible, this type of fireball effect does not occur. Three stoves will be demonstrated here, the newer Primus MFS EX the older Primus MFS and the Edelrid Hexon stove. All right, we got a good flame going. Now I'm going to time this. It's um, 32.25 on my watch. I'm going to let this run at high output, I think at about 30 pumps or so in this bottle. I'm going to let this run for one minute and then I will disconnect the fuel pump, connect the kerosene, there will still be fuel in the line from the kerosene bottle and then we'll see if that will be enough. Normally it takes a good a minute and a half to warm up the generator for kerosene. I have about another 15 seconds to go. All right, I will turn this off disconnect the Coleman fuel bottle. Connect the kerosene fuel bottle. This has got more air in it. It's about 50 pumps for about 70 milliliters of fuel kind of breezy today and then I will start up this again now remember this has still got fuel in it I got 3412 on my watch and let's see how long this will go before the kerosene hits it probably should stay away from being downwind because if this turns into a fireball I'm going to be right in the middle of it. That's been 30 seconds. Forty seconds. seconds.
60 seconds. That's the kerosene. You can see it's got some yellow tips to it. Now the idea is just, just watch this and see if it turns into a big ball of flames. Now I'm going to let this run long enough just to prove to myself one way or the other if this is in fact heated up all the way. I did check the jet from the last run and it was fine. Now at this point the Coleman fuel has definitely run out. I mean there's no way around that. So what this is is in fact the kerosene flame. When you get a breeze coming through here and it blows away the flame, it turns somewhat yellowish. But when the wind stops, it goes back to a blue flame. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Okay, I have 15 seconds to go. All right, I will turn this off. Disconnect this fuel bottle, and again, there will still be fuel on the line. I have the kerosene bottle attached. I have the control valve open all the way. Uh, that was about 45, 20, or 25 on my watch. We'll see how long it takes for the um, kerosene to catch up. That's about 25 seconds. About 30, 35, 40, 45. This is beginning to look more like kerosene. Well, clearly we don't have a big fireball, at least not yet. That's been one minute. And this is beginning to look a lot like a typical kerosene flame. When the wind hits it, it turns a little bit more yellow, but uh, this appears to be adequately uh, heated up. So the theory regarding the hybrid technique is certainly valid. And again, you would be doing something useful while you're going through this fuel uh, exchange thing. As soon as the Coleman fuel would catch, you go ahead and put a pot on, you start the water heating up. When you switched over to the kerosene, it would then continue the heating process. So basically you're conserving as much fuel as possible. But as you can see, the startup routine with this is, except for the fuel bottle exchange, is pretty unremarkable. There isn't a lot of flames going everywhere and stuff like that. Um, So this, I think, has got at least some potential. The main drawback being the requirement for hooking up two different fuel bottles. 